What this tells me is again, even when you feel like something's saturated or there's massive competition, 80,000 channels have a minimum of 100,000 subscribers. This is why Signalfire told us that being a content creator in general is the fastest growing small business type. I think around 1,000 subscribers, you essentially are probably able to have your own sustainable full-time online business. So you've decided to go all in on YouTube and maybe you even know what niche you're in and what topic you're talking about, but you haven't nailed the exact videos that you want to do next. Or maybe you're still confused and still in the experiment phase trying to figure out what type of content to talk about. Well, in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about trends and the next videos that you should make that will help you get views. We're sharing some of our best video content and some of the strategies behind how to make great videos that get views because that's what you need on YouTube. My name is Heather Torres and you're listening to the Think Media Podcast, the number one podcast where we help you grow your influence with YouTube and then use that influence to grow a high impact and a high profit YouTube channel. And we release a brand new episode every single Tuesday. So if you're new here, consider subscribing wherever you're consuming this content from. Well, today we are going deeper into the types of videos you should be creating. There is real strategy when it comes to what works on YouTube, what videos people wanna watch, and why people are clicking those videos. Sean's gonna break that down in today's episode, so lean in for the featured content. The next level of growth on your YouTube channel is on the other side of you posting your next best video. And in this episode of the Think Media Podcast, I want to talk about some very specific video ideas that are around some data and some trends that were reviewed really in 2020, but are still super prevalent today. So let's get straight into them. And then at the end, I'll do a recap and break down some very practical video ideas that you can use to get more views, get more subscribers and grow your channel faster. So number one is this videos with variations of the word beginner in the title, increased more than 50% between March and July of 2020. So as we are even in 2021 now, nevertheless, the world has changed forever. I think because of the pandemic, it caused people to reevaluate their life, their job, their priorities. Maybe they lost a job, so they had to reinvent themselves. And so a lot of people had extra time on their hands, and therefore they even discovered the ability to learn new skills, to start a new hobby, to start a YouTube channel, to start social media marketing, to, to start trying to figure out how to make money online. And so specifically, the word beginner in the title exploded during that time, but I would encourage you, it's still one of the best possible video ideas you could create. Have you made a video yet focused on Beginners. Globally, these videos get more than 9 billion views in 2020, words with variations of beginner. 66% um, of people in Germany use YouTube to develop a new hobby in 2020, and a whopping 94% in India uh, used YouTube to learn to do things themselves. And so here's a couple stats, and this is, again, from data last year that's relevant for this year, but views of beauty tutorials increased by nearly 50% in 2020. There was a 90% increase in bike maintenance and repair videos. As an aside, uh, it was interesting. My friend Shalene Johnson talks about flipping a lot of stuff and selling stuff on Poshmark and on Facebook Marketplace. Things like roller skates, bikes went through the roof because, of course, people were looking for alternative forms of transportation, but also just alternative things to do. So anything that people started doing more of, they are learning about and researching on YouTube. Daily views for raising chickens in the title increased by 160%. Videos related to learning guitar saw 160 million views from mid-March to mid-April. Videos containing gardening saw 6 million views in the same period. And of course, chickens, gardening, even speaks to the mentality of people thinking about wow, what if we're on lockdown and we can't get food? What if there's some sort of disruption to the food chain? How sustainable? is my business and my life or is my family in our food supply. So I wanna share this data with you to be thinking about not only video ideas you can create, but how are you paying attention and preparing for just shifts 
in human psychology and behavior based on what's happening in the world. Sure, lockdowns are softening, vaccines are rolling out, but nevertheless, these trends have shaped the world forever. So what kind of videos can you recreate in response? There was a 215% increase in daily uploads of videos related to self-care. I think mental health, self-care, um, trying that's a huge trend, right? There was a 458% increase in daily views and videos about making sourdough bread. It makes me think of Mary, who's one of our Video Ranking Academy students. She's grown from zero to over 300,000 subscribers. She helps people make bread, helps people pickle vegetables, helps people do all kinds of different things. And as people are home more, think about this. She never knew that was gonna happen. She was posting videos consistently. But one of her channel blew up because a certain shift in culture happened and she got to ride that wave. And there was a 200% increase in daily views and recipes for bubble tea. Videos of how to for home haircuts also spiked in April. And so, yes, we're not as locked down as we once were, but people, their entire behaviors have shifted. Some people shopped online for the first time in 2020, and now they're doing all their shopping online. Some people realized they could learn a new skill in 2020 for the first time, but now in 2021 and this whole decade, they're like, man, my whole life can change. I don't have to travel as much as I once did, or I could be more sustainable from home, or, you know, they establish new habits and behaviors. So the big question of today's episode is what videos can you make in response to these trends? The second big one is people watched 100 billion hours of gaming on YouTube in 2020. That is crazy. I mean, this doesn't mean that I'm asking you to change your niche or even to potentially pay attention to gaming, but it's knowing that gaming is massive. Did you know that esports is gonna be bigger than sports? It might already be that right now, whether it's the NBA and the NHL and base, and in fact, all sports combined will not even compare to esports. Maybe you didn't know that people gather in stadiums to watch people play video games, that people watch from around the world. You can watch Netflix specials on things like League of Legends that can attract, I think, like 12 million viewers to watch championship matches of those types of things, StarCraft II. Gaming is massive. And right now, there's more than 40 million active gaming channels on YouTube, and more than 80,000 of those channels have a minimum of 100,000 subscribers. What this tells me is, again, even when you feel like something's saturated or there's massive competition, 80,000 channels have a minimum of 100,000 subscribers. This is why Signal Fire told us that being a content creator in general is the fastest growing small business type. I think around 1,000 subscribers, you essentially are probably able to have your own sustainable full-time online business. That's 80,000 small businesses. And as those channels grow, sometimes they're employing others, employing e editors, and scaling and becoming media companies. Minecraft was the most watched game with 201 billion views, and Roblox was at 75 billion views uh, as well. And there's other uh, games that are, of course, popping as well. And one thing you may not know is that Think Media has a channel that we don't tell anybody about that is actually based on a popular game. And it's actually compilations and footage of other people. It's not even a game I play. It's an editor edits the videos for it. A script writer reads a voiceover for it. The topic, it's called a faceless channel. And this just kind of illustrates that you can potentially pay attention to where trends are and create content in those trends because if there's massive viewership, then there's massive opportunity. Number three, 72% of people use YouTube to exercise or keep fit in 2020. This shouldn't surprise us, right? We already knew we could turn on a, a, a workout video or a yoga video um, on YouTube, but that massively exploded. So if you're in the fitness niche, if you're moving into fitness, if you want to get fit, then you can know that there's lots of good fitness content on YouTube. There was a 515% increase in videos with home workout in the title in March alone. And some people look to develop very specific fitness skills. Listen to this. There was a 195% increase in daily videos on how to do a handstand. And people are sitting around, they wanna learn new things. Dance workout videos saw 180 million views from mid-March to mid-May. Why? 
not only dance workout, but people want to learn dances. They want dance tutorials. People want to grow their TikTok following by learning dances from tutorials on YouTube that can help them master those moves. Number four, daily videos with home office in the title increased increased 210% in March 2020. So as I share some of these, you might say, Sean, you know, I don't do fitness, I don't do gaming, but I want you to hear all of these because now we're on one that actually really impacted Think Media. Not only were we uh, already working from home, and we had already covered in the past things like standing desks, and I'm a huge proponent of productivity from home and thinking about optimizing your battle station in your home office. But that was one of the things we doubled down on in response to that trend. And we've had some videos breaking out about our home office setups. So if we teach tech, so things like desks and webcams and lighting, all that stuff just be continued to explode. But here's the thing, it's not going back. We've learned that in real estate that people are now realizing that you can there's no need to go back to a lot of in-person work. We can do a lot of remote work. And in real estate, people are looking for homes that have a home office and some way to work from home. So daily uploads with the videos, um, daily uploads of videos with at home in the title increase 700%. How to do your niche at home. How to, you know, build an office at home. How to just people are at home more. What video ideas could you create that, have to do with people working from home, being at home. And then videos with a combination of quarantine and routine in the title saw 10.5 million views in just March alone last year. So people want the new morning routine, homeschool morning routine, how to stay married during quarantine. Words like these are key words doing during trending times. I wanna ask you to also think about What are the keywords of the now trending times? What are the current trends? Because your next breakthrough on YouTube or your first breakthrough on YouTube is on the other side of talking about the right topic at the right time with the right title and the right thumbnail. When you talk about the right video that comes at the right time, when that's what people are thinking about, it can change everything for your YouTube channel and your growth. Number five, Daily YouTube live streams increased 45% in the first six months of 2020. This is not surprising in a year when live events were for the most most part canceled. Now, even in 2021, it's still kind of a weird time. Are we really going back to live events? Some people are doing them. We know we're going all in with our event, growwithvideolive.com. It's a virtual event because for this year, we still want to play it safe and still respect the, the general atmosphere of if people feel comfortable traveling. Some people are like, yeah, it's no big deal. Like, I'm there. I want to come do it in person. We're like, we get that. But a large percentage of people still don't want to. What does that mean? It means that right now, you got to be leaning into live streaming. This is something that no matter who you are listening to this, I hope you're live streaming. 53% of live stream viewers say that watching live streams helps them feel more connected to something larger than themselves. And 56% of people say that watching live streams can be as good as being at an event in person. And this is one reason why I think you should go live to keep that connection going with your community. And another thing that this looks like is not just YouTube live. You know, here at Think Media, we have what is called our YT Impact Challenge. It's our YouTube Impact Challenge. And if you haven't signed up for it yet, go to ytimpact.com. And we are there live. And you get uh, Tony's tip of the day and Heather Torres' sessions and giveaways from Melissa Caputo. And we do this event and especially whether A, there's lockdowns or people aren't comfortable tra- traveling or just B, it helps us connect globally. For some people, maybe jumping on a plane, you've got kids, but you want to be a part of something bigger. Two things, make sure to be a part of our challenge. And secondly, How can you incorporate live streaming, specifically YouTube live streaming? And we'll also drop some show notes, uh, resources in the show notes, because we have done definitely some training to help you get started with live streaming if you haven't done it yet. Number six, 50.9% of B2B decision makers use YouTube to research purchases. So this is B2B. One out of two B2B decision makers are using YouTube to make purchases. Think about it. 
In this case, I could think of, especially for a lot of businesses, they're maybe thinking about software. How are they doing their like Slack or Basecamp or Monday.com? How are they doing team management, QuickBooks? How are they doing accounting? How are they maybe researching different companies that are going to handle different aspects of their business? Or it could be anything. It could be B two B, it could be buying your next fleet of vehicles. You know, uh, what which model of vehicle do we want? Uh, we need a fleet of Chevy trucks, like whatever it is. So this applies, I think, to product reviews, product tutorials, and videos like that that you could create. That if you serve B two B, but even B two C, have you what product reviews could you do? What product tutorials could you do? That makes it the most used social platform for this purpose. Did you know that even outranking Facebook and LinkedIn, people go to YouTube B2B to make buying decisions? Crazy, showing the influence and the authority of YouTube. Number seven, 70% of viewers bought from a brand after seeing it on YouTube. So they might have seen it on YouTube in an influencer marketing integration. They might have seen it on YouTube as a YouTube ad. They might have seen it as a product review on YouTube. The point, punchline being that when I want information um, about making a buying decision, that YouTube is going to be a major influence. 70% of people viewing purchase from that brand after. So what does that mean for you? Well, uh, I know most of people in our community, you are the creator. You're the one that's in the content. You're making the YouTube channel or you're going to start your YouTube channel. But for a lot of business owners, have you considered working with other influencers, because that's influencer marketing on YouTube could be a powerful way to get the word out about your content. And it doesn't have to be million subscriber channels. It could be what's called micro and nano influencers, people with 5,000, 30,000 subscribers, and you actually collaborate with them, reach out with them, and get your product integrated into their videos. But the other thing is making a YouTube ad. Like YouTube advertising is very powerful and the influence it has is that after people are exposed to a brand, they make a decision. And then number eight, YouTube ads targeted by intent have a 100% higher lift purchase intent uh, than those targeted by demographics, which simply means that YouTube is unique compared to even advertising on platforms like Facebook. On Facebook, you target people by interest oh, I want to target people who like the UFC, that are men, that are 35 to 45, because your beard oil will probably be something that those men will love. Great. Well, on YouTube, uh, you can target by intent. You just, doesn't matter if they're, what age they are, if they like UFC or not, if they Googled how to grow my beard fuller, then Google pays attention to that and you can target ads based on intent. What people are watching, what people are searching is what is who those ads will be shown to. And this has a 32% higher lift in ad recall, which means that it just, they're outperforming ad format. And so I know that for you might be like, listen, I'm not to ads yet. I'm not doing digital ads yet, but some of you are. And some of you want to reach more customers, grow your business faster, and leverage digital advertising to grow your business. YouTube is a major platform where you could create a video ad. There's other ad formats, but one of those ads where you're normally click and skip on the ad, I'm talking about you being in That's your video, and you're getting in front of people that have the intent, they've already raised their hand, to say that they would probably be interested in your product, your service, or business. So the bottom line, let's recap it. I know this has been super heady, but uh, I wanna kinda give you some handles around this, around the question of what video are you gonna make next? What video are you gonna make next based on trends, based on what's happening now? A lot of this was what started by the pandemic started in 2020 and much of it's still happening, but what's happening now in your world and what video should you make next to trigger more growth than ever before? I'll hit you with a rapid fire recap. Number one, is there any beginner videos you can make? Maybe you're talking too fancy. Go back and make a beginner video, like your niche for beginners. Three tips for beginners. This thing for beginners in your niche. Number two, what tutorials could you make? any tutorials about a product related to your niche, things that your people would be interested in, your viewer would be in. Number three, what how-to videos could you make? People wanted to learn stuff, and guess what? They still want to learn stuff, and they're learning, whoa, you can learn anything on YouTube. People are going to YouTube to solve problems. Have you made a how-to video? 
Even if this is maybe outside of the content you normally make, I challenge you to experiment with some of these video ideas. Because if you make a tutorial or a how-to video, you might be surprised how much your current subscribers love it and how much growth it actually triggers. Gaming is big and getting bigger. Is there anything related to gaming or even referencing gaming that you could talk about? I think about Eric Sue, who we had on the Think Marketing Podcast. He's an entrepreneur, marketer, business coach. His book is called Leveling Up, and it's actually about gaming, because guess what? People who follow you and like what you do also have other hobbies. So sometimes it doesn't mean you start a gaming channel. It means you can potentially just connect with people who understand and think a certain way. Number five, from home is a massive trend. Work out and exercise from home, home office, you know, home office spaces. What can what's related to your niche that could help people at home? What are some of the trends that you could continue to go deeper on for people that are trying to make food at home, work from home, survive at home, self-care at home, homeschool at home, or whatever else? Number six, have you tried live streaming on YouTube yet? And when could you, can you schedule a live stream, plan out a live stream? Check out show notes and resources for tools to help you live stream. We love StreamYard, and we have a whole suite of tools at thinkmediatools.com that can serve you. What's a live show you could start? You know, we started our show, Coffee with Cannell. We started the Think Media Podcast live show with Heather Torres. And we started these new shows, simple shows, no fancy music, no fancy graphics, just going live consistently, done is better than perfect. And they built a lot of momentum for us here at Think Media because we were connecting with people, going deeper, getting more content out there, sharpening our own saw, sharpening our own ax, like, Having being forced to communicate, being forced to show up and come up with the title. It's time to do the show. What are we talking about this week? Like, challenge yourself to start a show every other week or uh, once a week, just a live show that's really simple, something you could consider. What's a product you could review in your niche? You don't have to be a product review channel. You could just review a product in your niche. What products could you do a tutorial on? If you normally give advice on how to market and reach customers, could you do a product tutorial on ClickFunnels or on an email CRM? Because the same people you're trying to help also would want to watch that. If you normally help people with design advice and ideas, and it's not just general design tips, maybe there's a particular tool or a pad with a pen for drawing and doing design that you could review or software that you could review. So many different products and product tutorials and product reviews can really help you grow. And then finally, do you have something for sale online? If so, start using YouTube ads. And um, that could be a major way for you to grow this year. Man, I know your brain probably hurts and Heather's going has got some really important information for us to uh, go for next steps on how to grow this year. But I want you to put at least one of these video ideas. I know I gave you like 10 summary things. What's your next video? Just what is your next video that could very much be your best video that could trigger massive growth in your channel. Because listen, YouTube is blowing up. YouTube is amazing. And there's never been a better time to go all in with YouTube. And it's going to be on the other side of your next best video. So that was a great summary of the types of videos you should be creating. And it makes me think about during lockdown, there were two things that I really got involved in. And I'm so grateful that people made content for beginners. That was John's number one tip, do for beginner content. I bought a brand new RV. Well, it wasn't brand new. It was a 1998, but it was brand new to me. I never owned a tool before, and I decided to renovate an entire 29-foot RV. But because of the power of YouTube and because creators just like you were creating specific content for a trend like renovation, I was able to not only learn how to use the tools, but create a beautiful project. The next thing was my family and I decided to adopt a puppy. Now, if you've never had a puppy before, it is intimidating and there was so much to learn. I binge watched so much YouTube trying to figure out all the things that I needed to know. Because people were creating content for beginners, 
all the way back to the puppy stage, I was able to not only have a dog that I love, but have a well-mannered and well-behaved dog. So my advice to you, start with creating that beginner content. It may feel like it's too beginner, but I can guarantee you from being someone on the other side, looking up information, I want the newbie, newbie, newbie stuff that I need to know. So that's my advice to you. And your next step with us here on the podcast may be to join our free five-day YouTube impact challenge. This is another challenge that we're doing here at Think. We do them several times per year. And if you've done a challenge with us before, then you'll definitely wanna make sure that you sign up for this one as well. If you've not experienced a Think challenge, then you are in for a ride. We're gonna be covering things like what types of videos you should be creating, how to get over the fear of being on camera, and how you can go deeper with helping the community that you love. So make sure you sign up for this free five five-day challenge at ytimpact.com. And if you're getting value out of this podcast today, I want to encourage you to press subscribe wherever you're listening, but also if you are on iTunes, rate and review this podcast. That helps us get this podcast in front of other entrepreneurs and purpose-driven people just like you. So all you need to do is rate and leave a review and you might be featured on the podcast. Today we have HCD on the podcast review saying, Think Media rocks. This team of YouTube marketers makes all the difference, in all caps, in teaching and motivating me to build my channel for success. That's exactly what we're doing. We're here for you to help you build a successful and sustainable YouTube channel. We know that this is hard work and we wanna help you learn from the mistakes that we've made so you don't have to make them and you can start to make a high impact and a high profit online business. Well, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. I wanna encourage you to share this podcast with a friend. I'm sure you know a purpose-driven entrepreneur in your life, someone who's creative and needs to be on YouTube, or maybe you need to go back and listen to this podcast again so you can just share it with your friends as you're in your normal day-to-day -day conversations with them. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you in the next episode.